welcome to the All Brands Show. I'm Barbara from AllBrands.com, a family-owned and operated business since 1976, and I'm super happy to be with you today back on the show and to see so many familiar faces and new faces. And yes, we have an amazing guest, Reen Wilcoxon from Embroidery Garden. She's going to be showing us the Luma, the number one sewing so embroidery machine in the market today, the most preferred machine, the Brother Luminaire XP2 sewing, embroidery, and quilting machine with PE Design 11 software, doing towels with magnetic hoops. Who's done that before? Let me know. And uh, just let us know where you're watching from and what the weather is like. Also, at the end of this broadcast, we will be doing a $50 allbrands.com e-gift card giveaway. So don't forget to go ahead and comment hashtag allbrands to be eligible to win that and good luck. So yeah, so let's just say hey to a few folks. Um, everyone's typing allbrands. Thank you so much, everybody. So, oh, Sharon uh, and Nancy, <laughs> it's good to see you too. Oh, hi, Pamela. Good to see you. And it, it looks like it's icy in Fort Worth, Texas. Oh my goodness. Yes, it's super cold in Texas and a lot of places in the world. I know Reen's expecting snow. So let's just bring her in. The fun, the fabulous, the amazing Reen Wilcoxon, founder of Embroidery Garden. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Reen. <laughs> It's so good to see you, as you usual. Do. Amazing. <laughs> so tell us what's been going on in, in your side of the world. Well, right now we're getting snow. <laughs> Hopefully it's going to be the last bit of snow for the year. Uh, well, for the season, I guess. But, you know, just kind of working on some things, thinking of some spring projects, um, you know, trying to shift gears here a little bit. Doing some behind the scenes stuff that, you know, hopefully I'll be able to talk about soon, but excited to be here with you. Oh, the feeling is very mutual. Um, yeah, so we have a lot to show today and I'm going to let you go ahead and get started with that. But everybody, we have folks on YouTube and Facebook in the chat. If you have any questions, just ask us throughout this broadcast. We'll be happy to try and answer them live as we go. So uh, don't be shy. <laughs> All right, Rain. So why don't you just take it away? Okay, thanks. Okay. So good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create a design like this. It's an embossed design. I know that's, um, there we go. You can see a little bit better there. And you're going to notice that the letter is raised. If I can kind of turn it on its side a little bit, you can see that it's raised. Um, and that's kind of what embossing is. This background here is holding down the pile of the towel and allowing this negative space, the letter, to let the pile of the towel kind of stay fluffy. So I'm going to show you how to do this entirely on the Luminaire. I'm using the um, XP1, um, and we're going to do it all in my design center. Let me kind of put this towel down here. I'm kind of in a little area that's a little bit small, but I want to go ahead and I'm going to change my camera view so you can get a better look at the towel. We can talk about what embossed kind of really is. So you can get a little better look at it here. And again, this is a fill stitch. So it's holding the pile of the towel down and it's allowing this negative space, the letter, to pop up, to stay raised up. And then I just kind of put a, um, a little satin stitch oval around it. We're going to be doing this again entirely on the machine. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So Barbara, if you want to bring up my machine for me. Okay, so like I said, we are in my design center. I'm on the Luminaire and we're going to do this all in my design center. Let me get my microphone moved over a little bit so you'll still be able to hear me well. Okay, so this is how the screen opens up. The first thing we need to do is we need to get our letter. Um, there's two different places we can get letters from 
the machine. So first let's go into embroidery. So you see, we have two font categories here. This number two and number three. Let's go ahead and look at number two first. So let me tell you right off the bat, skinny is not good for embossing. If you look at some of these fonts, you're going to see some really skinny little areas on these letters, like this one right here. There's lots of little skinny areas. This one has skinny areas. Um, it's not going to allow enough of the towel to show through to get a really nice look. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at some of these letters and we're actually going to use one of them. So I don't know. I'm just going to pick a category. It really doesn't matter. Um, let's just go ahead and pick number three here. And I'm going to pick a B. And I have to hit set. And I'm going to open up the edit tab. Whoops. Okay. So I can size this letter a little bit because these letters come in very small. You can see it's only a little bit over an inch, around an inch and a quarter. That's kind of tiny, but we're not going to use the actual letter. I see someone said, actually, skinny is not good. Yeah, skinny is not good for this. So let me just go. Hey, Reen, we did have a question. Um, what is the standard size of embossing, especially on towels? Like, what's your preference for size? Okay, well, on the bath towel that I showed you, I'm going to be doing a five by seven size. Um, you know, size is all up to you, but I did a five by seven and I think on the bath towel that I have, that size looks nice. You might want to go bigger. You got bigger hoops. Um, I wouldn't go smaller than five by seven on the bath towel, but let's go ahead and get back to this letter and, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to enlarge it as much as it'll go. Now these fonts in category number two will not enlarge very much. That's that's the maximum that I have right now. 162 by 179. That's as big as it's going to go. But, you know, that's okay because we're not going to stitch the letter. What we're going to do is we need that, um, whoops, sorry. Let me go back. What we need is the outline of a letter. Because remember, we're not going to stitch the letter. We want the letter to be negative space. So what we want is an outline. So if you look at this icon here, this little flower, it's called the stamp in my design center and on the machine. So we're going to make a little stamp of this letter. So if I click it, you can probably see there's a dark line now around the B. It might be a little bit hard to see. I can't um, enlarge the screen on this um, uh, page of the machine. But since we have a B and the letters like A, B, D, um, let's see, O, P, R, those letters that have an inside area to them, they have to be traced also. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn the, that on. And now it made a dark line on the inside and the outside of the letter. This is the distance you can set. We really don't have to mess with that because we can resize this when we get into my design center. All we have to do is click memory to save it. So when we do that, we get a message that says, we can recall the stamp that we just made from my design center. And so that's great, that's okay. And it's in my design center. We don't need this letter anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete it. I have the stamp. So, but let's look at the letters in this category number three. They are bigger letters. And, you know, I feel they're a little bit easier to work with. The first category of letters, these are beautiful letters. Um, they're not a good category um, candidate for what we're doing because of the little floral elements they have around all the letters. You know, you could use it, but there's going to be a lot of erasing and redrawing of lines. Uh, this next category looks good. You could use category number three um, because you can get a nice outline of the letter. Four, again, you have the... Um, the little floral elements that are going to give you problems. 
And five and six, I believe these are Greek letters. You know, like you can find the A and there's a B and a Z, but you're not going to get the whole alphabet in these categories. This last category, um, again, these have very skinny little areas. You could, you know, certainly try and practice with them, but I'm going to pick the second category and I'm going to pick the letter B. It doesn't matter that it stitches out two colors, the two blues because all we need is the outline. So I'm really looking at the shape of the letter. So I'm gonna set that. And let me go ahead and enlarge it a little bit so you can see better. Let's see, there we go. So again, we want an outline of the letter to create our negative space. So let me go up to edit. Whoops. And we're gonna do the exact same thing that I did with that other B we're going to make a stamp of it. So let me click that. And you can see a dark outline going around the letter B. Now see this area right here, right there up at the top. Eh, that's going to stitch. If we don't take care of it, that will stitch. And I really don't want that. I don't like the look of that. So I'm going to take the distance and I'm going to increase it. And every time I click, you can see that area right here at the top of the B closing up. And I think that's about as far as I'm going to get it. I think if I click one more time, or maybe, okay, now you'll notice the lines went away on the inside of the B. I have to have those lines. So let me drop it back down one. I still don't like this area here because it will stitch, but we'll take care of that later. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put that in memory. And again, it's gonna say we can recall that from my design center. That's great, we'll say okay. I don't need this letter, we are not gonna stitch it. So I'm gonna go back home again. We're gonna delete this. And now we're gonna go into my design center and start creating. Um, I see someone's asking, why did I do two letter Bs? That's only because I'm going to show you, you know, a different, that you can use fonts in category number two if you want to. Um, but I'm going to be using the B that I picked. That was the, the last one, the more fancier one. I'm just trying to show you diff different options you have. Okay, so we're going to go and we're going to start creating our design. The first thing I need to create is the shape. And on my towel, I did an oval. Now, if you open up the shapes, just about any one of these shapes is a good candidate to do what we're going to do. You know, maybe this one I don't think might be so good, only because you'd really have to enlarge it to be able to get a nice size letter in there. But any of these, the majority of them would work well. Even if you go into this next category up here at the top, um, you have several. Any of these in the front top row here would work nicely. These would work nicely. Um, you know, the heart. This would be really cute, this bear head um, for a baby to do a little monogram on maybe a blanket or something. But I'm going to go back and I'm going to pick the circle and I'm going to turn it into an oval and do it just like the sample I showed you. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And now the first thing to do is size it. So I'm gonna click size. And you can see up here at the top, it comes in at 6.42 by 6.42. Now, of course, I've already created this, so I know the size that I'm gonna use. First, let's work with the height, and I'm gonna be changing the height of this to 6.75. I'm going to use this icon here. It goes quicker if I use my finger and press it. We're watching this top number it at the, right here. And let me get it to 6.75. There we go. And now I'm going to change the width and make it skinnier, give it a more oval shape. And that's the bottom number. And I'm going to drop it down to 4.75. And why did why am I using these numbers? It's just numbers that I liked. I like that shape for an oval. 
So that's what I'm going to use. Maybe you want to use different numbers, but I'm also using the size 6.75 high by 4.75 wide because I'm going to be stitching this in a five by seven hoop. I don't want to make it exactly five by seven inches because then I don't have any wiggle room when I go to stitch it and get my placement on my towel. So I'm going to hit OK because we're done sizing. And my mouse, my mouse went to the next screen. So it's resized. Now we need to bring our letter in. And remember, that comes from the shapes or the stamp key here. Here's that exact same flower that we used when we saved it. So let me click that. And now here's those two B's that I made. Remember this B? Let's just kind of bring that in. And I'll show you how that looks. So if we were going to use this B, of course, I, it needs to be sized. And I'm just going to quickly kind of size it here a little bit bigger. But you notice as I'm doing it, it's getting a little bit, oh, I don't know. It's not a nice kind of straight. Let me zoom in a little bit. See how the lines are a little bit kind of crooked and not quite straight? You can go in and fix that. If that's okay with you, you can use this. That's why I wanted to show you that these small letters in category two may not exactly be the best candidates. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to undo this. Hi, Reen. Yeah. I'm getting um, several questions for folks that have the earlier models of this machine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's kind of stumping me a little bit. So folks that have the Dream Machine and the Destiny, um, do you remember if there's like, um, I guess, any of these features are available on those models of machines? I believe all of these features that I'm showing are on there. Oh, perfect. Um, you have you. your shapes. <laughs> you have your shapes. Um, you have, you know, the fills. I know the fill that we're going to use is going to be on there. Um, all of this can still be done on, uh, you know, the earlier sh machines, the Dream, the Destiny, um, and all of the top of the line machines, you know, the Stellaire, the, the Tin Needle, all of that. Great. Thank you. I could not remember. I was trying to. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that's, I would just wanted to show you that one letter and how it looks a little bit different. I think it would take editing, a lot of editing to make that look nice. So let's go back into the stamps here and let's get that other B that I made. And that's this one right here. Go ahead and hit, whoops, okay. Okay, now it came in, it's really big. We have to size this. So we're gonna hit size. And you can see the size up here. And like I said, of course, I practiced this. I did this um, earlier. I'm going to bring the size down. We're working with the height, the top number, to four inches. And we come down a little bit more. And again, these are just numbers that I picked, I thought looked nice. And I'm going to take the width down to 3.25. And I went a little bit too far. Okay, there. I think that size looks nice um, inside of my oval. Here's that area again that I talked about earlier that I really didn't like because that is going to stitch that little. Let me see if I can zoom in some more on that. There, I think you can see that a little bit more. Um, I don't want this to stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the eraser. And we're just going to erase this. Whoa. I haven't used the eraser with the mouse um, too much. <laughs> I love that you use the mouse. I, I always forget that. Well, I like to use it because I when I'm doing a demo like this, because I don't like to get my hand in front of the screen too much. But it is handy. <laughs> Handy. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's real handy. Okay, so I erased it. You can see now that I don't have that extra stitching up here at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And my mouse, sometimes that's, my mouse will 
kind of do some things I don't want it to. And what it just did was advance me to the next page, which I don't want to go to the next page quite yet. All right. So we've got that done. This um, We had that part erased. The letter, though, this is not stitching. We have to apply stitching to it. So let's go up here to our line properties and it defaults to a zigzag. I don't want my letter to stitch as a zigzag. I want it to stitch just as regular running stitches. And this is the regular running stitch here. And I'll pick a color. I'm going to pick green. It doesn't matter what color you pick. I just want you to see how it's going to change. You do have to click the bucket to apply it. And I'm going to zoom back in again. And when I click on the outline of the B, you're going to see it turn green. That means I've applied a running stitch to it. So, I mean, we're, we're kind of almost done. This goes pretty quickly. We do have to put our fill in now that's going to hold the pile of the towel down. So let's look at our fills for a minute because there's some things about the fill that we need to think about. So when you go into fills, the first one here that it defaults to, that is just solid embroidery. We don't want that. The next one is a stipple, which would be good. But let's look at our amazing fills that um, the machine has in it. My mouse would cooperate. So as you look at some of these fills, and my machine is a, has been upgraded to a two. So I've got like 42 fills. But as you look at them, they're beautiful, but they're not really going to be tight enough to hold the pile down. I see Tammy is saying, we're not stitching the letter. No, we're not stitching the inside of the letter. We are going to stitch the outline, but nothing on the inside. That's what's going to allow the pile of the towel to come through. Let's just go ahead again. I'm doing this just to show you what it's going to look like and why we not, why we really can't use some of these built-in fills. So I'll just pick this one and say, okay. And um, my mouse jumped again. I'll pick green again. Doesn't really matter. Click the bucket that's underneath the fills. And now I'm going to click the space that is between my letter and my um, oval to apply it. And I have to click the space that's in the upper part of the B and the lower part of the B. So let's go to the next screen. We can edit on this next screen, but let's look at this fill. And let me bring it up bigger again so you can get a good look. That is like, that's not going to hold any part of your towel down. So we can change the size, but if we um, look at it, we can only go down to 50%. The machine is thinking, it's recalculating the stitches. And you see that it's the outside part here. It still is not tight enough. So that's why these fills are not a good choice. Up here in our preview window, we can work with the different parts of the design. And right now it's showing the fill. So we're going to change the fill because that's not really a good choice. What's going to be a better choice that's built into the machine? is the stipple. So I'm just going to select the stipple, hit OK. It's recalculating. It goes back and zooms out. So I'm going to zoom in again for you. Now that's still big, but we can come over here and we can do some editing of the fill. This first um, box up here, that's your run pitch. That's your basically your stitch length. We don't want to mess with that. The second icon here is the spacing. And we want to bring that spacing down as much as we can. And it will go all the way down to 0 0.08. And you hear that knock knock? That means that's as low as it'll go. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And you're going to see the difference. See now it's nice and tight. That's what we want. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to click the select arrow to work on different parts of this design that we're creating. Here's this fill. I think if I hit the link button here, it selected both sections, the top part of the B 
and the bottom part of the B. So I can change those both at once. Again, let's go back up here to, whoops, where my mouse go? Back up here to the fill, go back to that stipple stitch, hit OK. It's thinking now, it's recalculating, putting that stipple into those areas of the B. It always zooms back out, so let me zoom back in. But you can see those need to be um, spaced, the spacing needs to be changed on that. So I'm going to take that spacing down again all the way as far as it'll go. And that's going to make it nice and tight. There we go. Hit OK. And you can see it change. So that's kind of our fill that's going to hold the towel down. This negative space of the B is going to let the towel um, come up. You know, it's not going to push it down. So that's how you get the embossed look. Let's hit the select arrow to see what our next um, part of our design is. That's just showing the bottom. We've already taken care of that, the bottom part of the B. Now this zigzag stitch that goes around our oval, that's kind of skinny looking. I want to beef that up a little bit. Um, so this is our uh, zigzag or satin stitch um, width. So let's just change this. I think I changed mine to 0 0.180. You can't go up higher, but if you start going too much, then the stitches start, you know, getting, they're just too wide. So let me go ahead and hit OK, and you're going to see it change. And I think that is a better satin stitch going around. Now, this is the density. Um, since we are working on a towel, I am going to bump it up. You can only go to 110%. That's as far as you can go. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And it's going to change. And let's see if one more time, go through our design. And that is the outline of our letter. And it's showing that it is a running stitch. And that's exactly what we want. At this point, you can save it to memory. And what that will do is um, only my design center can read this. You can use this to go back and edit and change anything. So you wouldn't kind of have to really start over again if you didn't want to. I'm just going to go ahead and set it. It's telling us it's converting this to an embroidery design. And we're going to head over to the embroidery side of the machine. So I'm going to hit OK. And here we are in embroidery. Hey, Reed. Kind of, yeah. We do have some questions if uh, you don't mind taking a little breather so that we yeah. can uh, address some of the questions. Um, so Tammy asked earlier in the show, um, are we going to get fonts for this demo? So these fonts that Rain's using are built into the XP2 Luminaire. You can right. use any um, font that's in your machine. Um, and... Carol Lombard asks, do you use a topper when embroidering this design? I'm sure we're going to get to that. Right. We are going to get to that. Okay. And um, Shirley asks, on my Luminaire 2, I have the choice for single or double line. Which should I choose? I think she's well, talking about... I think you're talking thing. about the filts or the quilting stitches and... Um, I actually didn't use the quilting stitch. We tried to do it. Remember, I showed you that honeycomb and those are just too big. And that's where you can choose like single run or triple run. We use stipple and it's just a single run. Perfect. So the single stitch. Um, and Glenda asks, I guess for towels, for a border, would you use anything other than the satin stitch? Around? Sure, you can use that candle wick stitch if you wanted to. You do want something that's going to kind of mimic a satin stitch or a candle wick, something that's going to be nice and tight and close together. So if you did use um, candle wick, you'd want to make sure that you put all those little, um, you know, dots, the candle wick dots close together, as close as they can be. Great. And last question for now. Uh, Tammy asks, what type of thread are you using? 60 or 40 weight on the top? I'm going to be using just regular old um, 40. embroidery thread, 40 weight embroidery thread. Perfect. Thank you. And one other thing about the fonts, I did want to say, um, you can, if say you didn't want to use 
you know, your machine didn't have a font that you wanted to use, go to your computer, find a font that you like. Remember, skinny is not good for this. And um, type it, just type a letter out, print it, you know, make it as big as you can on a sheet of paper, print it, bring it in, scan it on your machine, bring it into my design center, and you can do the exact same thing. So you have options there, but you would have to scan it and bring it in to work with it in my design center. Okay, so this is our design. Let's just kind of look at how it's going to stitch. It, the machine did break it up, which is okay. Um, it's going to actually stitch. Let's go down here to um, embroidery and watch the steps. It's going to stitch kind of the background. Then it's going to stitch the outline. Then it's going to come back and, whoops, I skipped one. Or nope, I guess it's just going to do um, those two. I thought it had broken it up into a different um, uh, way to do it. Well, yeah, there are three steps. On this one, um, I am going to stitch the background, that stipple in white on this towel. On my sample I showed you earlier, I did it in gray so you could get the idea. You could see it. I am going to use white so you'll be able to see the difference in the two, but I am going to do the um, satin stitch on this one in a contrast color so you can see, um, just so you can see the, so you can see that, so you can see how different it looks. So um, let's see, Barbara, if you want to bring me back up or at least my table back up. Okay, so this is the towel. This is a big bath towel. Um, you know, Crystal, if you wanted to put a satin stitch around your letter, you could, but I don't like that. I think it's distracting. This letter is popping quite a bit without using, um, you know, anything else around it. If you like that look though, you can, but remember it's going to take away some more, um, area, meaning, you know, like this R here, it's got a little tiny little leg on it. So you know, it's your design. You can do it however you want. So let's kind of look a little bit here how we're going to um, get it ready to stitch. Now, I am using a hand towel to stitch it on. In my opinion, five by seven is too big for a hand towel. The reason um, I am stitching on a hand towel is because my area here is limited and me trying to move a big towel around with three cameras around me is a little bit, um, it, it's too much. So I'm just going to put it on a hand towel for you. Now, how did I get this template printed out? After you get into embroidery like we are now, you can save the design. And I saved it to a stick. I took it to my computer and opened it up in PE Design. When a design comes off the machine that you made, it comes in as a PHX file, which um, my design, I'm sorry, uh, PE Design can read it that. You can bring it in. You could even do some more editing if you wanted to. Other softwares, there's not a lot, but there are, I think, a couple that will read a PHX file. But anyway, I took it into PE Design. I printed a template, and I printed a template with a snowman marker already on it. You can... Um, all you got to do is when you go to file print, you um, you ch make it choose it to print that. Yes, Barbara, Brenda, I'm sorry, I am doing it on a hand towel. As I explained, me putting a bath towel here underneath my camera, I'll be knocking things over because it's just too big in my area. Normally, I would not put a five by seven on a hand towel. I'm just doing this for more convenience. So what I did was I um, hooped a piece of cutaway stabilizer. Carolyn, the size for a hand towel, it's all up to you. All of this is up to you. Um, I made my design, you know, when we were in my design center and I was, you know, what I sized the oval to be, it's just what I wanted it to be. You can make it whatever you want it to be. So we've got our stabilizer hooped. I am in a five by seven hoop. Um, if you look at my towel, you can probably see I folded it in half, got my fold line. I put my 
tape my template down to where I wanted it to be. And I'm going to let the machine um, line up the design for me using the snowman marker. So Barbara, if you want to go back over to the machine for a second here, I've already got it threaded and I'm going to get the hoop put on and I'm going to go into edit. I'm sorry. I have to go to embroidery, go into layout. Oh, my mouse wants to be crazy now. And you see the little snowman. I'm going to pick the snowman. It's actually kind of appropriate because it is snowing outside right now. <laughs> okay, it's asking a few questions. I'm just going to hit OK. It's going to scan. I'm going to hit that. It's telling me the carriage is going to move. Look out. OK. And it's going to... What it's doing is it's scanning the hoop and it's got to find that little snowman. And let's I see. love that this machine has a camera on it. Yeah, I'm kind of going to swing around a little bit. <laughs> yes, so it. she's scanning her fabric and it's going to show on the screen of her machine, which is so cool. Yeah, I can't really move the camera too much, but it's finding the center of that snowman. And Tammy, I don't, I don't launder towels before I embroider on them. All right, so let me go back to the screen. And it's <laughs> hey, we did have it, a question, Reen. It found from it. Linda. She says, uh, "Do you ever use sticky wash away stabilizer? What are the pros and cons for that?" Personally, I don't, only because the times that I have used it, when I go to take it out of the hoop or remove it, it's pulling the loops of my towels. So I personally don't use. Um, sticky Got it. but you know if that's what you like you can certainly go ahead and use it i see kathleen's asking about the snowman if you print in pe design so first let me get this going okay now it's telling me to remove my positioning mark so i'm going to take that off but we got one more step we have to do so barbara if you can come back to my table Okay, so I can take this off now. The machine is all lined up, okay? The machine's all lined up, so I don't need that template. Um, but, okay, so let me get, grab my sample again one more time here. And I'm going to hold this up as high as I can. Now, the stipple on the machine only goes so low. Um, and... You know, it's not as tight as I can get it in software. So what I'm going to do to help hold the towel down more, let me move this, is I'm going to use a piece of tool. Now, this is bridal tool. This is the really tiny, um, it has the little tiny openings in it. Let me see if I can't hold it over my shirt. I don't know if you can see it, but there is netting. And there is bridal tool. Netting has a lot bigger um, openings in it. So, you know, use the tool. It has the little tiny openings. I'm just going to lay it over. And yes, I am using a tool circle that I got, you know, from one of the big box stores. It works. I do want to pin it down in place because I don't want it to move on me. So I'm just going to. It's a little hard to see because it is white. Tool does come in other colors, so maybe if you have a darker towel, you want to use, you know, um, a color of tool that matches your towel. And the fact that I'm going to stitch this one using white thread for the background, you're not going to be able to see it at all. Now, before someone asks, um, you on this, you're not going to want to use this plastic topper because it's not once it gets washed out it's the stipple isn't close enough to hold it down nicely okay so we're going to talk about this other topper though in a minute i do want to get this stitching let me make sure everything's okay here i do want to get this stitching so that we'll be able to see it and all i'm going to do is put it on my machine and get it started and we'll see if there are any other questions 
you are doing such a great job answering us them as they come in, Rain. Um, <laughs> did you answer Kathleen's question about the PE design with the snowman built in, or are we going to do okay, that? Okay, yeah, let me get back to that. Let's, you want to bring the camera back to um, me? And... On the okay, so in PE design, when you go to file, you have a design on your screen. When you go to file, print, if you look at, um, let's see, it's print preferences, I think, or it's print options. It's one of the two. You have the option to check a box that will print a template with the snowman already on it. Okay, it just then you click print and it comes out just like this. Now, this was a full sheet of paper, of course, and I just trimmed it down to the size of my design, but you can print it. You don't have to um, draw it or you don't have to, you know, they do sell stickers, um, separate little stickers that you could use too. I'm going to keep an eye on my machine. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so you can print that right out of the software. You can also, you know, do these hoop this in your magnetic hoop and do the exact same thing get it lined up and um you know this is one of the dime magnetic hoops and use uh use this instead of a traditional hoop i am looking over at my machine just to make sure nothing <laughs> happens because we all know what happens when you look away <laughs> Well, and you also the Luminaire has that uh, baby monitor app on it, too. So, I mean, you could right. see if it stops or needs a thread change or something like that. Um, here's a question from Walk by Faith. Will the embossing hold up wash after wash? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, let's kind of look again. Now, this one from the machine has the tool under it. So the tool isn't going to wash away or anything. So, um it's definitely going to hold up. You do want to use cutaway. You know, don't use a tearaway. Use a cutaway on something like this. Um, I'm going to show you in software, if we have time, Barbara, um, how I can get the fill tighter and we can use like the plastic kind of topper. Okay, great. We've actually had a few questions about, like, say, if they don't have a luminaire, can they create this design in software? Um, I know one customer had a brilliance. Um, you have Brother PE Design 11 full digitizing software. Um, so I, I know that's what you're going to be demonstrating today, but um, are other folks able to do this? Well, it's just that you follow the steps, you know, and basically I'm going to follow the steps. A little bit different, uh, but any software should be able to do these basic steps that I'm going to show you. Yeah, cool. And I love the tool idea. That blew my mind. <laughs> okay, we have a few other questions. Let's see. Uh, where do you buy those beautiful towels? What's one? <laughs> <laughs> the towels I got, they just came from Target. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's one from Sherry. Why cut away? Because... You know, these are, let's see, this one's got 59, a little over 5,900 stitches. It's not real stitch intensive, but, you know, you want it to hold up. And that's why I use cutaway, because I, if yeah. once you do wash it, you want it to look the same. I know a lot of um, industry folks say cutaway is the most reliable stabilizer you can use on the market. Um, so when in doubt, uh, Cut away. Um, here's one from Lisa. Could she use no show mesh? Um, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't. Okay. I don't think it's going to hold the stitches enough. I saw someone ask about showing the back. Everybody wants to always see the back of something. Um, and I'll show you my back. I'll show you my backside. <laughs> Here we go. So, I mean, that's how it looks. And to me, that's perfectly acceptable. I don't see anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, here's one from Marcia. Could you use organza? Oh, they have like the... You know, I think you probably could use organza too. Great idea. Either one of those. Yeah, either one of those would work well. So for a heavy towel, because I know a lot of folks are um, apprehensive about towels which is why I really love using those magnetic hoops because you don't necessarily have to flip the towel. 
right? Unless it's like right. super cool. Hooping a towel is kind of hard. And all I'm doing now is I'm changing my thread because it's going to stitch the um, that satin stitch. And I wanted to do a contrast. So I'm just Well, that to... answers Bobby's question. Did you use a darker color thread? So yes. You know, it's, it's all up to you. You could do this whole thing in a matching color. You could do the whole thing in a contrast. And that actually is um, what I did on this one on my sample. I did it all on a contrast. That's all a great light silver kind of a color. The one I'm doing now, this background is going to be in white. So you're really not even going to be able to see it. But I am going to use the contrast around here only because that's my preference. If you yeah. wanted to do the same color, you certainly could. I love the texture that towels create when you knock down all those loops on top using that stippling, it's just, it's a, it's beautiful and it, and monotone. It looks nice too, not just on towels, you know, a fleece blanket, um, Sherpa, uh, cuddle fabrics, you know, anything that has a pile to it, it looks nice on. Yeah. Here's one from Brenda. Do you cut your stitches in the back? I guess it depends you know, on, on the design. Stitch. There's not really any, too many jumps. I mean, yeah, you have the, you have the, um, you know, all the stipple is just one section. You have the outline, which is another section. So they're not jumps. The machine is cutting that. You might have a couple little tails you can trim off. Yep. Uh, Marcia asks, um, is the back soft? Was her question. Well, it's pretty pliable to me, even with cutaway in there, you know, it's not real stiff. That's why, though, I want to use the cutaway on it to keep it where it doesn't, you know, like buckle or do anything like that. Oh, Donna says, wonderful ideas, Reen. And I agree. I'm learning things today that I didn't know. <laughs> um, your inventions of, of cool ways to do things. And um, let's see. Dawn says, I tried embroidering towels years ago before they had amazing machines and stabilizers. And they were awful. Glad things have improved. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All right. So how's it going with the embroidery ring? It's going good. I just, you know, I can, like I said, I like to keep an eye on stuff because something always happens. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Someone's I'm asking about Mylar. I don't know if I'd really use Mylar on this. This is not the type of a design for Mylar. Mylar, it's a different type of stitch, you know, that you would use. Yeah. So let's see. Nilda asks, what is the name of this embroidery technique? So it's, I call it embossing. Basically, oh, my towel fell down. Let me grab it. You know, a lot of you like to do what they call knockdown stitching. So it's kind of knockdown stitching, but we're also creating this embossed look by leaving this negative space that isn't stitched. So I call this embossing. Carolyn asked if you can use the heat topper. You could definitely use the heat topper if you wanted to on something else, not the one that we create on the machine, only because the one we create on the machine, we want the topper to stay in. And the topper on the one on the machine is this tool. If we use like a wash away or a heat, you know, dissolving topper, it's going to let a little bit of the towel, the, the loops of the towel pop up eventually because on the machine, we just can't get it tight enough. In software, I can get it tighter. Got it. Okay. Do you want to do more questions or should we show a little bit on PE Design 11? What do you think, Green? It's up to... Everyone, um, I think it'll take me maybe five minutes to show, you know, how to do it in the software. Well, that's easy. Let's answer some more questions then. Okay. Um, Lois asks, are you going to remove the topper over the letter to allow the pile to raise? Yes, I am. When it's all finished, we're going to get rid of the um, tool that is around the design. It's going to be pretty easy to do if you use that tight um a uh, tool, you know, with the little tiny squares, it'll be easy to get off. If, you know, you don't want to use netting, like I said earlier, that's, you know, has bigger squares in it. 
this is my satin stitch going around the oval is almost done. Then I'm going to change my thread one more time, do that outline, and then it's going to be done. Oh, so fast. Okay, Fran asked, did you use cutaway from the back of the design or does it stay in one piece? Do you use hmm. cutaway from the I'm back? I'm not sure what she means, but this was, you know, obviously hooped with, you know, a big rectangle of stabilizer. And what I did was I just trimmed um, my cutaway close to the satin stitching on the back side. Oh, hey, so look who's is. watching. Joanne. Hi, Joanne. <laughs> she says software expands your possibilities. That's for sure. And Cindy <laughs> says she definitely wants to see software today. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to, I got to change my thread one more time. Sure. This while while you're doing, doing that. that um, while you're doing that, Mickey has a question. She says with the cutaway, would you cut it cut it out inside the design. I'm curious how it would hold up the washing machine leaving so much on the towel. The, the cutaway, the stabilizer, all you want to do is just trim, you know, just trim that away on the back side, you know, close to that outline stitching, just like you would anything else. You know, I think people, you know, get concerned or something about leaving the stabilizer in there, but you want the stabilizer to be there. Let me give you another look. Yeah. You can barely see it, um, but you want it to support the stitches that you have. It, it kind of holds up like a cotton in the wash that I've noticed. If you have a good quality cutaway, right. it washes well. Um Oh, let's see. We had a really cool question from a new watcher. Hi, Annetta Brown. Welcome to the show and thanks for watching. Uh, Reen is actually embroidering on a brother XP one or two? One. One. Is it upgraded yet? Yes, mine's been okay. upgraded. <laughs> so it's an XP one that's been upgraded to the XP two because uh, she got it originally. Brother comes out with upgrades for their machines. So when there's new features that come out, when the line is is uh, current, they have um, they have free updates available. Uh, but you can purchase upgrades to make your machine from like a one to a two, which is really cool. And thank you so much, Annetta, for joining. So well, it's done stitching. If you want to. Yeah. Have a look at it. Let me go ahead and switch my camera. I just took it off the machine. All right, I'm just taking the pins out. All right. Now, I my other piece of uh, tool that I had laying here got caught in there, but that's okay. Let me just get that off there. All right, I know it's going to be hard to see because it is white. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to just clip through this netting or tool till I get close to there. And then I'm able to just tear it. And if I go slow and I pull it, you know, towards the stitching, it comes off very cleanly. If I have to, I can use my scissors to kind of, you know, grab a little bit again. But basically, this is going to just tear right away close to those stitches. So let me get this done from the um, around the outside. And you can always go back and clean it up. It's hard for me to see this white on this white. But it's just going to, you want to get it nice and close to your satin stitches. I don't want to cut my towel. But again, see, I can just tear it nice and close. And then we are going to take the uh, netting, or I'm sorry, I keep calling it netting, the tool. So there it is all the way from around the edge, away from the letter, the inside this letter. So I am going to use my scissors just to start it. I just want to get them underneath there. I don't want to get any loops of my towel. And once I kind of get a little opening in there, I'm going to use something that isn't sharp. I'm just going to use this for lack of something else. 
And let me get we it in there. We carry that, I believe. That's the OESD point and turn tool. Uh, it's the it. R and K. R and K. Okay. It's just something that's not sharp. I don't want to use my scissors because they'll definitely grab one of these little loops. So I'm just going to, again, I'm kind of tearing it away. You can probably hear it. Can you hear it tearing? So I'm taking it off of the letter B and that's allowing, maybe let me bring it up here closer. You can see right here is where I've taken it away so far. And you can see how it's puffing up. Let me turn it to the side. And then this still has the uh, tool on it that I have to take, um, take off. But I can go all the way around the design and pull it away and see th the fill is holding the towel down and the part where we did not stitch this negative space is allowing the pile of the towel to fluff up all nice. Isn't that cool? I love it, Rain. We did have a question, uh, a few questions, if you'd like to answer. Okay. Uh, Sherry asks, uh, she thought you were leaving the tool in. Well, I am. The tool is underneath here, underneath the fill. But we can't leave it on top of our letter because that doesn't um, allow the pile to come up. The tool is still here, all underneath the stipple, all the way around. And right. that's what's holding, helping to hold the pile down around it and in these two areas here so that it allows this towel. You can see right here how nice the towel is fluffing up where I've removed the tool. And right here, I still have to remove it. It's still holding it down. These check textures are making me so happy. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Karen asks, what scissors are you trimming with? Um, these, I know, I think, I believe I bought these at all brands in Houston. These are the little Kai four inch scissors. They have a curved tip. Yes. I like to use them, um, in, I don't know, just about everything. I'll see if we can get that. Everything. I'll see if we can get that link in the chat to whoever's monitoring. Um, let's see in, uh, Car Carlotta asks in what order is the stitching done since we didn't see that part. Okay, so the machine determines the stitching. And what it did was the first thing that stitched was all of the stipple. Then it stitched this outline, the satin stitch oval. Then it came back and it went around the letter. Um, there is a way that you could change the stitch order, but that's I didn't design the design like that. There's also a way that we could go in and we could add underlay around the satin stitch. It requires a few more steps, but um, you could certainly do it. But if you see this, that looks pretty good. You know, the satin stitch on this towel. I would say, and a lot of folks are in the comment, comments are saying that that's absolutely gorgeous, Rain. Um, Tammy asks, are you using a ballpoint needle or a sharp needle? I'm using a sharp needle. Yeah, 7511. Correct. Right. For embroidery. Um, I don't I don't tend to ever use any size other than 7511 for embroidery unless. Yeah, um, me either. Something very special. <laughs> uh, Carolyn asks, I have PE Design Plus and PEP, not PE Design 11. Will either of those do a knockdown stitch? That's a good question. I don't. No, P plus, I believe that's just, isn't that just a transfer software? I know PE Design Plus does that beautiful um, photo stitch, and it has some editing capabilities, but I can't. And that other software she mentioned is Dime Software, and I know you guys carry Dime. Um, and you can do it in there. It's just, you just know the steps. Yeah. Um, and all I'm doing right now here is I'm just going around very close to the stitching and, you know, taking off my uh, cutaway stabilizer that I used. Oh, it's yeah, gorgeous. It's going to be done. <laughs> so and it's cool. done. <laughs> now, again, like I said, I'm going to let me go ahead and get the camera back to me here. But um, I did this 
on a hand towel. And normally I would not use a five by seven design on a hand towel. It just was more convenient for me to move it around my small cramped little work area here. Instead of moving a towel, I, I probably would have knocked the camera over with a big bath towel. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier in the show, someone asked, do you generally do your first initial or your last initial? I guess it's a perfect personal preference. If you're doing it, it for the family, I would say last initial, but if it's for you, <laughs> first you can, initial. You can do whatever you want, you know. Yeah. So here's how the towel would be folded. I mean, the five by seven doesn't look, you know, that bad, but it's definitely, you know, I would definitely go smaller. I would probably go something that would fit into a four by four hoop on a hand towel. That's great. And um so uh Lynn, let's see, Linda asks, what size do you use on the hand towels? And that's all personal preference, really. Really it is, you know. Yeah. I wouldn't, I would just I'd probably use something that would fit in a four by four hoop. Or um you could still use a five by seven, just you know, maybe make it four and a half or you know how I judge things. Like if I wanted to do something on a hand towel. You know, I would get my ruler out and kind of do some measuring. And then maybe I would think, okay, maybe I want to do something that's four by four. I'll take a piece of paper and cut it four by four, put it on there and see how it looks. You know, it gives you a visual. Very normal cool. set rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really. When, when it comes to art. <laughs> yeah, there Just, are no uh, set rules. Yes. It's what you want to do what you want it to look like it's your project yes so guys don't forget um we will be doing a 50 dollars allbrands.com e-gift card at the end of the show so if you're just tuning in please be sure to comment hashtag all brands to be eligible to win that um so i really hope that that you do but we do it for every show so um please if you haven't yet please like comment and share this post and subscribe to our Facebook page and our YouTube channel to see more videos like this. And it won't be our last with rain. I can promise you that. <laughs> so let's see if we have any more questions before we go to PE design 11. Do you still want to do that rain? Sure. Okay, cool. Let's see. Here's one for Nilda. Um, I think it, oh, okay. Oh, I got a bunch. <laughs> I got a bunch of questions. Uh, oh, here's a cute one from Lori. Should she enclose washing instructions when gifting towels? I guess personal preference. It, it would be nice, you know, especially maybe for like a wedding, maybe someone who's new to, um, you know, going to be a, a homemaker for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Terry asks, are you leaving the stabilizer in the middle? I know you cut away the tool and the, did you use right, the topper? So the the stabilizer is what goes in the hoop. Okay. So the stabilizer is in the hoop. The design was stitched and you can't get the stabilizer out of the middle. Okay. It's, it's in there. It's been stitched in. If you're talking about the tool that I put on the top as the topper. Yes. I did remove that from the top of the B. This is all stitched down. I think if you see this, sample you're going to be able to see it better because i stitched it in a contrast color let me find where i stitched it <laughs> all right here it is so let me try to get a close-up for you so i did this one in the silver you can see the stipple the um tool is underneath it so it's all stitched down but on the r that's where i removed it because I want the pile of the towel to stick up. That's so I don't know if you're kind of mixing up stabilizer with that topper that I put on there, which the tool, it's not a, what do I want to say? A common topper, machine embroidery topper. You normally would use, you know, some of this plastic stuff um, on the top of a towel when you embroidered it. And that's what we would use when I show you how to do it in software, because again, in software, I can get that background tighter than I can doing it on the machine. Oh my gosh, Joe, I agree that silver thread is gorgeous. 
And thank you so much, Marie um, and Rain. You're, this was a great presentation. Um, I learned a lot. I'm super inspired. So let's see. Did uh, What would we like to do next? Do we need to? If you want me to go to, into PE design and kind of quickly show how you can do it there. Oh, that would be wonderful. Um, yeah, let's let's go ahead and do that. Oh, look here, Cindy says, show us software. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me bring it up here. Okay. And hold on one second. Of course. While she's doing that, I'm just going to let you guys in on a little secret from all brands. Uh, we are a local dealer in Louisiana and Texas. So I hope that if you are from around our area that you stop into our stores and experience these machines for yourself. Um, these are our current locations, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Slidell, Lafayette, Houston, and San Antonio. And uh, we are, we have the XP2 on display where you could just try it for yourself. And right now we have actually the best offer that we've ever had on this machine. I had to write all the things down so I wouldn't forget. It comes with a scanning cut that does the 330D that where it talks to the machine, which is awesome. The luggage, the playbook, it comes with the software, the full digitizing software that Rain's going to be showing. It's called PE Design 11. It comes with the Angela Wolf Masterclass and 2,500 designs with that. Um, it now has the digital design transfer for wireless designs back and forth from your machine to your computer. Uh, and also you can either do a trade-in or 60 months financing. So um, yeah, I think <laughs> it's the best deal we've ever had. But, uh, oh, Rain, it looks like that you're ready to go on the embroidery. Uh, yep. software, PE Design 11. So I'll bring that up. Okay, so I'm in PE Design 11, and we're basically going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, do the exact same steps that we did. We're going to go up into the Shapes uh, tab, and you can see, let's see, here's a uh, some, it's a shape we're going to turn into our um, outline. I don't want to fill right now. Let's just turn that off. And now let me choose a darker color so you can see it. We'll choose red. And draw an oval. Um, go to the Home tab. And I want to get it centered. And I want to change the size. I think on the one that I did, I did 6.75. And I made the width. What did I make it? Um, 4.75. Hit OK. And that's the um, that's how we started. Now, to get a letter, I'm going to go up into the text, click on uh, a tech, the text tool. You know, you can pick a whole bunch of different built-in fonts. Um, you can pick your true type fonts that you have um, installed on your computer. I'm just going to go ahead and take, this is number six, right out of PE Design. It really doesn't matter. Um, you click on the screen, and let's go with the B again. I click again, and it that puts stitches on it. I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to size this. Now, remember, look at that. That's not going to stitch well if you stitch that B out, but we're not stitching the letter. We're going to use it as a template. Um, for that negative space. And I'm just going to kind of size it a little bit, get it, you know, kind of looking how I want, put it in the middle. And we're going to say that that's okay, that I like that. What you have to do is trace around the letter. So let me go up and grab a tool. And we're going to take this um, close curved tool and I'm going to set it to a running stitch and let's make it black so you can see it. And I'm just going to start on the letter, doesn't matter where. And I'm just going to trace around the letter. Very easy. Um, you know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time getting it, everything, you know, really pretty and stuff. It's just the idea of doing this. Go all the way around the letter. I'm going around the outside first. 
double click and that closes um, closes it. You can see it, here it is over here. You may not be able to actually see it in the middle of the screen yet because that red B is covering it. I do have to trace the inside part of the B. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Double click to close it. Come down here, do the bottom part of the B. All right, now I don't need the B anymore, the red B. So let me select it, delete it. And now here's my outline. Now, it looks a little <laughs> bad, right? You can go and select it, select the editing tool, and then you can sit here and you can play as much as you want, straightening it up, moving your points, getting it to be exactly how you want, deleting points, adding them in, but, you know, getting it to look how you want it to look. And I'll just quickly, you know, show you the inside, um, doing one of the inside portions. Why can't I click that? Let me select it. And now the point edit. And again, I'm just, you know, moving points, straightening it up. You would do this, um, you know, make it look however you want it to look. Let me just do a little bit more around here. And I might, you know, go through this and you know, I would definitely clean that up a little bit more, but you get the idea. So let me select all of these. Select the objects. And now if I wanted to, I could resize it a little bit. Um, I go back to the home tab, put it, make sure it's in the center. And, you know, play with it until you're happy with it. Now we're going to go back and let's select this, um, the oval that we put around there. And let's turn on the region fill. Whoops, I didn't select it. So right now I have it not sewn and the region fill is this area here where I put the stipple on the other design. And we're going to use the drop down menu. And what I like to use that is a nice tight fill is the one that says net fill stitch. Let me click that and you can see it filled it in. It filled in our negative space too. We're going to take care of that. Just hold on. But I want to take this um, net fill, make sure I select it, go over to the sewing attributes um, and I can, if I wanted to, hold on, I'm not on the fill. This is the, uh, this is the zigzag, the line. So we can add under sewing here, which is important. You can see that it's checked. I am going to make my zigzag wider because it's not really too wide right now. And when I make those changes, you can see that it changes that. And let me get back to that. Um, I want to get back to the net fill. Okay, now I've got it selected. You can see it's the net fill. Over here, you can change the pattern. It does have a couple of different patterns. This first pattern is fine. Um, I do want to bring it down, though, all the way as close as I can get it. 0 0.08 is as far down as it will go. And it makes it nice and tight. I do like to change the direction. And... If I get the uh, angle down here, you see it's set at zero. I can do 45. That's just a personal preference. Again, let me move that up there. But I just kind of like how it does, you know, it makes it on a point on angle. Uh, I'm sorry, an angle makes it on point. Now, to get our fill out of this area of the B, we're going to go ahead and select the fill and select the parts of the B. I have to select them all. And when you come up here to modify overlap, click that, set whole sewing. Whoops, I got the wrong ones. I just need the fill and I believe this outline. Whoops, I want to take the fill and I want to take the outline of the B, select both of those, modify overlap, set whole sewing, and it took it out 
of the B, but it also took it out of these two. We can fix that. I'm going to go and I'm going to select it and turn on. Let me go ahead and do both of them at the same time. Save It, it saves a little bit of time. Select both of these areas where we need to have that fill in there. Let me turn it on, go down to the net fill, go back to our pattern, bring it down all the way to 0 0.08, like the other one, change the direction to 45. And again, I do that just because I like to. Now here we also have the option of setting everything to stitch the same color if we wanted it to. And I can change the order just by dragging these things. Um, let's see. Let me pick all of the fills. The yellow is the fill. And I can just select them and go up here and put them underneath this other fill. Now you see we have three um, steps to the design. And if I want to, if I want to make my outline the same color, which I probably do, I think that looks nicer. Go up here and change the color. Whoops. Click the color. Change it to the same color. Move it up. And then I have my satin stitch at the end. So now I have two colors. If I wanted to do it all in one color, all I got to do is select that and change that color. And it all stitches out in one color. Save it. And you're ready to stitch. So... That's when you had a question earlier, Rain. Um, can you use this digitizing software if you don't have a brother machine? And the answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs> the design is a standalone software. I'm going to go ahead and get out of the software now. But P design is standalone software. No matter what kind of machine you have, you can save to. Oh, I don't know how many oh. formats, but there are several formats you can save to for different brands of machines. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the uh, only thing I wanted to say about, you know, the design I just created, um, since it has that really nice tight fill, that's where I can use this piece of um, water soluble. It's this plastic type of um, topper. I can use this um, instead of using tool and then stitch it the exact same way and then just pull it off when you're done. Oh my gosh. Okay. So we only had three questions um, that I saw during the uh, presentation for the PE Design 11 full digitizing software. And here's a good one uh, from Sandy Ratter. Have you ever used a design other than a letter? And oh my gosh, I've seen the Disney designs that Brother has exclusivity to with the stippling around. Looks so cool. So yeah, you could, you don't have to use a letter. You could fill your whole oval with stipple and put the design, stitch it right on top. And you know, that would look really nice. You, you know, I'm embossing, but you wouldn't have to emboss. You just use that fill to hold that pile down and stitch another design on top. Yeah. Okay, so we have time for one more question. And Lady Fair says, is there an easier way than editing the nodes in a digitizing software? So like when you were... So when I traced that letter, um, mm -hmm. you know, you it all depends. Um, you That's can bring question. in, you know, something that would automatically trace it. Um, it just kind of all depends. I wanted to show you you know, just using a built-in letter and tracing around it because I think you can do that in almost any software. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Sandy. Yes. Thank you, Reen. I agree. I uh, can't wait to try this method. Uh, let's see if we have any more questions. We just have a lot of love for you. Um, well, if you guys try this, you know, be sure to post, you know, on All Brands page and my group, you know, in All Brands group. You know, we'd love to see what you do with this. Yeah. So tell us where um, the All Brands folks can follow you. And then I'll tell uh, the Embroidery Garden folks where they can follow All Brands. So where can they okay, follow so, you? You know, you can follow my page um, on Facebook, EmbroideryGarden.com. Um, has a Facebook page. You just type in um, Embroidery Garden ITH um, in the Facebook address bar. You'll get there. 
and I have a group. It's the In the Hoop group by Embroidery Garden that you can join and, you know, see what people yeah. are doing with my designs. Yeah. So if you're new to all brands, please, uh, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or both, please subscribe to our channels because we do a live show every week and we're going to be doing our giveaway very soon. Uh, we, we have that every every Thursday at 3.30 Central Standard Time. Uh, we also have a Facebook group called So Forum, uh, which Reen contributes to a lot and carries on there a ton too. And it's just so great to see everyone um, on the allbrands.com So Forum Facebook group. And we have our website. We ship all over the world. Um, it's just, yeah. <laughs> we, You know, we were actually the first... Uh, sewing and knitting uh, seller on the internet in 1996. Wow. I know. <laughs> Angela <laughs> Wolf bought bought her first uh, serger from us on our website. Uh, she was telling me that. But I'm, I just feel very fortunate to be here with you today and, and everyone that's watching. And thank you, Reen, so much for the inspiration. Oh, well, thanks for having me, Barbara. Yeah. And uh, thank you everyone for watching and we will see you next week. We will have Stacy Louie, who is one of the owners of So Steady, talking about some new products. So um, don't miss out on that. So we hope that you all have. Oh, I, don't I, let I, me say the same. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't forget. All right. So let's bring up that uh, giveaway screen and. Jordan is going to pick a winner. And that winner is Marla Hornberg. Congratulations. Please email me at events at allbrands.com, your name, number, and address to claim your prize. And I'll respond to that email to get that over to you. And congratulations, Marla. And I don't think Marla's won yet. So yeah, welcome to the show. And I hope that you get to get tons of goodies with that uh, awesome, awesome $50 All Brands gift card. So hey, Barbara. Yeah. Can you run that thing again? Oh, yeah. I'll give away a gift certificate to embroidergon.com. Yay. All How right. About, let's, let's bring it about, back. I'll do, yeah. I'll do a $25 gift certificate. Okay. Jor Jorga Altman, congratulations. And Very Jorga, nice. you can email me too, and I'll forward that to Reen at events at allbrands.com uh, to claim your prize as well. And thank you, Reen, for being so generous with your time and now even a giveaway. So that You're is very welcome. Fantastic. You're fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. So stay warm, stay safe, and keep sewing. It's uh, therapeutic <laughs> and fun. And yeah, <laughs> it's good for the soul. That's right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you again, Reen. Thanks, Thanks. everyone for watching. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.